Bienvenidos my friendos to a new video of the particle system series and this is the patch as we left it last time. Now in this video we are going to see how to make the particles actually bounce on the edges of this virtual cube that we created and we will also see how to abstract our gravity formula here into a function so that we can have multiple attractors for example without having to rewrite uh, every time all these lines of code. Great, so let's dive in. First of all, uh, let's do this thing with the gravity formula. So this is the transfer feedback shader, not the render shader. So the transfer feedback shader that we created uh, in the beginning that is responsible to actually move our particles by modifying the position buffer of the GGL mesh. Then we got here our render shader that uh, is actually responsible just to draw our particles which we will then modify in the future also using a geometry shader, but not yet. So for the moment, we want to take these lines of code, so that our att uh, gravity attraction formula for the attractor here in the center of the patch. And so let's do like this. Let's select all this stuff. So from the vector tree attraction force in which we start to create our force. So we get all of that, cut it. We go up here. And let's create a function declaration. So, vo uh, no, this actually returns a vector three because it returns our gravity force. So, vector three attraction force, let's call it. Or let's maybe call it uh, gravitational attraction force. Great. Good. Let's first kind of define it up here, then we will move it on the back of the shader. So I will copy just the lines that I cut from our gravity formula. Okay, great. So what do we need here? First, we need definitely um, we need a g, a gravitational constant for these attractors. So we could have multiple attractors. Every one of them has a different gravitational constant. So we want to put it these here as an argument to this function. If you don't remember how functions work uh, in programming languages in general, I made a video about them, uh, especially specifically about how they work in GLSL. I will put the link in the description. So this is going to be our g factor. So we actually don't have to declare it anymore here inside these those lines because we are simply passing it as an argument to the function. Then the attractor position we actually want to pass as well. So this is going to be a vector 3, attractor pos, and uh, let's actually call it attractor position, so we don't have to rename it inside the function. Good, uh, the attractor mass we could also pass it as well, I suppose. Well, actually what will be neat is will be to create a structure that contains all the parameters for our attractor. So we could do something like this. We create a struct, which is of type struct. So which is very similar of how we create a structure that sends the data out uh, from the vertex shader into the fragment shader here in the render shader. Um, but here, in when we declare it not as an output or an input, we need to actually declare it as a structure. So let's call it attractor, it actually works like this, uh, exactly like in C++, I believe. So then we write uh, this, our attractor as a G constant, right? Then it has a position, which is a vector three, position, and it has a mass also. So it's the like float G, float mass, right? And then it has a position. And if I save, we get an error because, of course, we still have to finish this uh, function here. Oh, and of course, I need to put a semicolon here after the struct declaration. So let's try to use actually as a as a, our structure as an argument for the for our function. Okay, it's a bit wild. Never did it before, but let's give it a try. So let's first create our structure here inside the main function. So we need to actually we need to actually have an instance of class attractor. Uh, declared inside our, our main function. So let's do like this. So this is of type attractor. Let's call it tractor one. So we have to write like this attractor, and then we need to define the the values of these data inside the structure. So first we need to define the value for g. So let's say for example 0.0.1. The mass, let's say we want it to have it to one, and then let's say the position is going to be a vector three set on the center of the world. Okay, great. So if I'm not mistaken, this should actually work. 
Max is complaining of course, but hopefully we'll stop complaining in a second. So we got our attractor here. So let's try to use this as our as our argument for the function. So attractor attr. Let's just call it attr. So the attractor mass, let's do like this, let's say float mass it's equal to attr dot mass. So this should actually work. And then we have to define g. So let's select this. Float g is equal to attr dot g. We could just use it in place instead of uh, calling here g and just call attractor g. But uh, uh, for the moment, let's just do like this. It will be a bit more easy to, to write this. So attractor position is uh, simply, let's going to write it like attr dot position. Great, and then the distance from attractor is the length of this vector. And then we clamp it, so it never goes below 0 or above 10. And then we have our attraction strand. Great. And let's see, I, have, I actually forgot to include some line, exactly because we actually need also these two lines here, which I forgot to include in the beginning. So we'll copy them here. So we normalize the attraction direction here. And then the attraction force is actually the attraction direction multiplied by the, our attraction strength. So let's return then our attraction force. Attraction force. And this should actually work. And in fact, Max is not complaining about it. If we start the transfer feedback, it will give us an error, which means undefined variable attractor mass. Right. And that's because, oh right, I made a mistake. Actually, here mass is actually the uh, mass of our particles. So we actually also need to pass as an argument to this function the mass of our particle, I believe, which is a float. So particle mass. So this is actually the value of uh, mass. Let's actually do like this. Let's actually directly write this here. So particle mass multiplied by the attractor mass. This was the gravity formula that we saw in a couple of videos ago. Our attractor mass is just going to be actually attract.mass. And at this point, we could actually just replace g here as well with attract.g. Okay, it was a bit messy, but I hope you are following with. Great, so we should have everything in place right now. And it still gives us an error. Undefined variable attraction force. Great. Um, that's because we are using it here, but never actually declaring it exactly. So cool, let's now try to call our function that we just created here. So gravitational attraction force. Uh, let's try. So uh, let's create actually our attraction force, back three. Attraction force is equal to gravitational attraction force. And this is our actually attractor one. And this is the particle mass, which we just called mass inside our main function. Here is the mass that we are getting from the texture. Okay, great. Let's see if this actually throws us an error. No, it seems to be working. Amazing. We are using our structure to pass a whole structure inside the function as an argument. Amazing. I never did that inside the GLSL, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, we could actually also change the position of our attractor. Let's see if this actually works by putting it, for example, one step on the right. Exactly, now all our particles move one step to the right and then we will just wrap uh, because of the check edges function, but it seems to be working. Amazing. Let's put it back in the center. Great, so the first part of our video is done. Great. Now, the second part I said would have been to make the particles bounce from the edges of our cube. So let's actually do that. But before we do that, sorry, let me actually put this definition of the function actually uh, at the end of our shader. So we have all the declarations of the function at the beginning of the shader here. And then we have the definitions here at the end. So I will put this after check edges. Great. Exactly, so this is functions definition. This is the declaration of the function function declaration and that's the definition and in between we have our main function so at the beginning of the shader we don't have so much space occupied by those function definitions okay great so let's go on with uh, our function that makes the particle bounce from the edges 
So instead of calling this function check edges, uh, let's just call it actually wrap edges because that's what it's doing. So let's change the name here. Let's change the name here and let's change the name here. Right, exactly works. Okay, great. And let's now create another function. So instead of calling it wrap edges, uh, we just copy the wrap edges function. We pass it down there and we say this is going to be bounce edges. Right, and we still need as an input uh, and an output because we will write to the position and then we'll get the cube world size as an input. We actually need another argument, which is our velocity because we are going to modify also the velocity of the, of the particles. So this we need to write on it as well. So we need to say input output uh, vector three velocity. Great and uh, good. Let's actually define this function. So let's copy the declaration and let's put it uh, actually uh, after wrap edges here. Great, and let's start to write what this actually this function does. So we want that when our particles arrive at the edge of our virtual cube, they bounce back. So what we want to do is to say this. So if position dot x is greater than cube world size, right? So if the position is greater than cube world size, then we want to say that position dot x is equal to cube world size. So it will just stick to the edge, but our velocity. Oh, and we actually I forgot to include the velocity argument here. Sorry about that. Let me actually copy it from here. Ah, I forgot that because I actually just copied the previous function. Dumb me. So it's actually called bounce edges. Exactly. And then we want to actually reverse the velocity. So velocity dot x per equal to minus dot one, right? So the particles will just bounce and uh, go on the other direction. Let's first try if just this works, just with the x. So let's save that and let's call this function here. So instead of wrap edges, let's actually say bounce edges. So we need also the velocity as an argument. So let's say O velocity, because this is the last velocity we actually were we actually were writing to. So O velocity. Great. And let's save and we got an error because actual parameter must be same type as formal out parameter. Alright, because velocity is actually a vector four. Which is not so good actually. So we have uh, let's say if we write it if, if epsilon zeta if it's actually okay with that it's actually okay with that so let's see if our particles actually bounce on the x-axis so let me set the camera do they actually bounce back yeah it seems they bounce let's actually do like this let's remove the gravity force so let's move uh, remove the acceleration let's move our attractor force here so they will just exactly so when they reach the right border of our cube they will just bounce back right let's actually visualize our cube uh, using a ggl grid shape here so ggl grid shape pf particles shape cube dimension let's make it very small like four by four and poly mode one one so we can actually see through it so this is our cube where the particles are constrained inside. So let's make it a bit less vertices. Eh, it looks a bit ugly, actually. Could I actually have a tetrahedron? So let's try with the GGL Plato. There we go. So this is actually not shape cube. So let's actually delete the dimension argument. We don't need it attribute. We don't need it anymore. Does it have shape cube? I thought it was just accepting. Oh uh, yeah, it will just translate it into shape exa. So let's actually write it as well inside. Okay, great. So we got our cube that represents the bounds, the boundaries of our uh, three-dimensional world for our particles. Great. So if we start again the transfer feedback, we can see that they bounce on the right edge of our world because of our bounce edges. But then they just they just keep going down because there's nothing preventing them from falling. So let's implement the other constraint. So let's say if position x then is actually less than cube world size, uh, we want that uh, position x is equal to minus cube world size. 
because it must stop on the other side now and uh, the velocity is reversed as well. Then let's say if position y, unfortunately we need to do it with individual components because uh, otherwise we will not be able to set the, um, the position uh, for the x, y and z I believe. Maybe we can also do it in another way, but for the moment let's just dumbly do it like this. Wait right on. So then if position z is greater than world points, uh, cube world size. Then we reverse the z, we set the z uh, to be at the edge position, we reverse the velocity and we should be done. So we did x, y and z, so all the three axes. Great, so let's give it a try. And uh, ooh, they will not start at all, then there is a problem here. Right, and this is what I did wrong. I said if position x is less than cube world size, actually it should be minus cube world size. That's that was a dumb thing to do. Yeah, okay, now you can see that it's actually working. So let's go here and let's uncomment all these. And let's say when it's greater than cube world size and then less than minus cube world size because this will be then the other side. Right, on the negative axis. Great, so now this should actually work. And okay, seems to be working. They are bouncing off the thing. As you can see, now one thing that we may want to do is to say that when the particle bounces on the edges, they lose a bit of their velocity. So instead of multiplying the velocity by minus 1, we will multiply it by a value less than 1. So let's create here a variable, and we call, can call it uh, bounce dump. Bounce dump amount, and let's give it a value like of 0 0.9, for example. And then we multiply this by this value, because... Uh, in this way, when every time the particles bounce on an edge, on a wall, they actually lose a bit of their previous velocity, which also makes sense, like objects, when they bounce, they actually lose a bit of their previous speed and velocity. So great, it seems to be working. Let's reinstall the um, attraction force, so this that we commented out before. And uh, right, so when they bounce then to the edges, so then they're super attracted by this object, then they bounce to the edges. And let's try to put the attractor a bit on the right. We will see in the future video how we can modify this using a uniform. And if you already got it, I encourage you to, in, to do it yourself. Create a uniform and modify this attractor position uh, from the max patch. Otherwise, wait. you can wait for the next video. So let's change also the position of our uh, shape that we use to represent the attractor. Exactly, let's actually put it a bit, uh, not so on the wall, but like at a position of 0 0.8, also here in the shader. Right. Cool. So the particles are bouncing there. Uh, then we can move, we will move our attractor in the next video and see how we can actually move it using uniforms. So to make it go around and the particles follow him, this will be, it will be very funny. Okay, great. So this was it for this video. I hope it was not too confusing with what we did uh, with the particle, with the attraction force here, and then the, um, and then the bounce edges function. It is fairly simple, but I know this kind of tricky stuff if you never did it before, and especially in like a programming language like GLSL, which is uh, very different from Max programming. And then we also created struct, which was something very nice because we can then pass it directly. Uh, as an argument inside the function instead of passing the individual parameters which i find pretty cool i have to say okay so thank you very much for following stay tuned for next videos on the particle system check my pattern if you want to get access to this patch one week before everybody else and um, to get also inside the discord community and to get all my patches i mean there's a lot of goodies there on patreon so check it out if you want and thank you anyway for following and see you in the next video ciao